God have established various principles and various channels through which we can walk into the blessings or experience the blessings that he has in store for us. For example, as long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest time will never cease. So if you want to enjoy any fruits or fruitfulness in your life, there's a need for you to follow the principle of sowing and reaping. As long as you see that in Genesis 8, I believe, seed time and harvest time will never come to an end. And anybody who applies that principle, it doesn't matter who you are, the blessings out of that principle will manifest itself in your life. As a matter of fact, you might not even be a Christian, but if you are bold and confident enough to obey that principle, you, you will derive the dividend that comes out of that act of obedience to God's law. Uh, amen. Another principle, for example, honor thy father and mother, that it shall be well with you. Ephesians chapter 6. Honor your father and mother, that it shall be well with you. It's a divine principle that anybody who sees the need to honor father, to honor mother, to honor any authority they serve under, there is a blessing that you will receive. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise. And look at the verse number three, the first commandment with the promise. That it may be well with you, and that ye may live long on earth. So if I want to live long on earth, and I want things to be well with me, one of the ways by which I will attract that blessing into my life is for me to learn to honor my father and to honor my mother. Amen. Anybody who honors his father, anybody who honors his mother, that person can be whatever it is, these blessings will be the portion of that individual. That's why sometimes I get a little worried about the kind of society we are creating today where respect for old age, respect for those who have gone ahead of us, respect for authority is literally evaporating through the window because of new, strange, foreign concepts and thinking that is finding their space and slot within our society. Honor your father. Honor your mother. That it shall be well with you. And the Bible did not bring any condition to that. That if your father treats you well, honor him. Or if your mother did well, honor her. Honor your father and mother, period. But the Bible says that when you do that, it shall be well with you. And you will live long down here on earth. Let us learn some of those places. It is an established divine principle that works. One of these divine principles is the principle of first fruits. What it simply means is that recognizing God and anything that has anything to do with God and give that thing the first place in your life. Recognizing God and anything that has something to do with God and give that thing the first place in your life. If you study the life of those who live under the law, their first fruit, and they use the word first fruit because those people, their, their, their economy is agrarian in nature. The economy is built on agriculture when you study it. There are farmers or uh, herdsmen who are raising 
animals, and so forth and so on. So you measure the wealth of an individual by how many cattle, how many oxen, how many sheep, how many goats, and so forth and so on that they have. The size of their land, how many diamonds or gold and things like that that they have. They measure their wealth by those things. And God told them that if you are a farmer and you plant a field, the first fruit out of that field is mine, must be given to me. And when you give it to me, I, the Lord, will sanctify the rest of everything that you will do. God went on to say that if you even have a child, your first mate child belongs to God. So you give that child, you dedicate that child to God for his service. And God will bless the rest. Amen. If you are a cattle man, somebody who is into animal husbandry, the first one belongs to God. And then God brings blessings into your life. Nowadays, we are, we are all not into agricultural business or into farming or animal husbandry and so forth and so on. And even if you are a farmer, I wonder where we can store all the proceeds that will come from your farms it is, if it is first fruit. So we say that convert that thing into something monetary, uh, monetary bring it to the house of God and say that Father, you have done A, B, C, D in my life. This is the first fruit out of it. I give it to you as a way of recognizing that everything that I have and every blessing that I experience in my life, I go through that as a result of your grace and as a result of your mercy. Amen. That is all that you are saying to God. God, God, I do recognize and appreciate the fact that whatever I have is as a result of your grace and is as a result of your mercy. The point is that, the point is invariably, God, God doesn't need cities up there in heaven. No, he doesn't. Neither does he need dollars or any other currency. He doesn't. But when you do, the most important thing is the act of obedience or the act of recognizing that God, you hold the first place and the central place in my life. Amen. And when you do that, according to what Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 3, when you do that, there are things that God will do in your life. They put that in there. And ye shall not delay to offer the first of your ripe products and of your juices and of your firstborn of your sons. You shall give it to me. As so you can see there. But let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 9. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 9. Honor the Lord with your possession and with the first fruit of all your increase. Hallelujah. Anytime you do that, you are honoring God with your possession and the first fruit of all your increase. Look at verse number 10. So your bounds, so your bounds, so your bounds will be filled with plenty and your voice will overflow with new wine. When you do that, so that your bounds, so that your bounds will be filled with plenty. Simply put, if you learn to honor the Lord by that act, you open the door for God's blessing to reach out or reach down to you. If you honor the Lord with that act of obedience, you open the floodgates of God's blessings to manifest themselves in your life. In Ephesians chapter 6, if you honor your father and mother, your physical authority, you shall live long, it shall be well with you. If you honor God 
with your possession and the fat fruit of all your increase, God says that your bounds will be filled with plenty. There will be major blessings that will find their way into your life. You go to Matthew chapter 6. You go to Matthew chapter 6, that famous scripture, we all know it. Chapter 6 and verse number 33, we quote it, Matthew chapter 6 and 33. But seek ye first, again look at the word first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Is that right? What are the things? Maybe let's start from verse 30 to refresh our minds about now if God so close the grass of the field, which is, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Therefore do not worry about what you will eat or what you will drink or what you will wear. For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. So there is a seeking. The Gentiles seek what they will eat, what they will drink, and what they will wear. And when we say Gentiles, we mean non-Jewish people, or in our particular context, those who are not members of the family of God, simply put, those who are not born again. They seek after these things. You wake up in the morning, you sit behind your car, you stay in the office for hours, you do everything. Why are you doing all those things? You are looking for what you will eat, for what you will drink, what you wear, some roof over your head, some money to take care of yourself and your family. That is the reason why we go through all this hassle in our lives, period. And Jesus said the Gentiles seek after these things. And there's nothing wrong with working hard to take care of your family. And look out there, for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. Things. So God knows that you need what you eat. God knows that you need what you will drink. God knows that you need what you wear. And if you have to extend the, the least, God knows that you need somewhere to lay your head. God, God, God knows that you need some money to take care of business. God knows that you need money to pay school fees. He knows that. You need money to take care of your family and your children. God knows that you need those things. But God is saying, let me show you a better way of getting it, which is different from the way the Gentiles do it. Oh, amen. amen. I hope you understand the point I'm making. We all want to go to Kumasi, and God is saying, I know that it is important that you all get to Kumasi. There are a certain group of people who want to get to Kumasi by walking? By walking. They want to get to Kumasi by walking. And God said that is the way they do it. But then God comes to the scene and says that, I know you all want to get to Kumasi, but let me show you a better way of getting to Kumasi. Instead of walking, that is the way the Gentiles do it, there is a way by which you can fly and get to Kumasi in 25 minutes instead of working to get there in two weeks. Amen. So Kumasi is what we need. What we will eat, what we will drink, what we will wear, and so forth and so on. God says that I know that you all need it. But this is the way the Gentiles get there. Let me show you a better way of getting to that place. And God says that the best, the best way or the better way to comparison. The better way of getting to that place is that seek ye first the kingdom of God, God's way of doing things. Put God first in all that you do. 
God's way of doing things and make sure that you do it right. And guess what God says? If you do that, there will be no need for you to fight to get those things. I, the Lord, I will make sure that all these things shall be added unto you. In other words, instead of spending your energy in seeking after those things, you seek after me, I will bring them to you. Amen. Seek after me, I, the Lord, I will bring them to you. What does it mean to seek the kingdom of God? Different interpretation, but one key thing, look out for God's way of doing things and do it. Put that one first in your life. And all these things shall be added unto you. This is Jesus speaking. First things first. So I come and say, God, things are rough. The economy is tight. Ends are not meeting. Things are so challenging. I have a lot of strategy. The people out there, they are doing A, B, C, D to get it. But God, I am coming to you this year, 2024. God, my first fruit, that is determined by you. I could say that God, my first week salary, first week, or first day's income, or first month's income, based on my faith, on my level of expectation, Lord, I bring them to you. Lord, making you to know and understand that this year, I'm recognizing the fact that every success I will go through this year will be by your grace and by your mercy. So God, take it first. You know the prophet Elijah established the same principle. When he left the brook of Cherith to the house of that widow who was left with their last meal, their last flour and their last oil for them to eat and die. Bible said when the prophet went there and spoke to that widow, he said, this is all that I have. I am picking some sticks. We are going to cook some food. We will eat it and die. Elijah established a very important different principle. He said, bake the cake and give it to me first. The principle of first, give it to me. Give it to the anointing first. And when she did that, the prophet spoke. The oil will not run out and the flower will not cease until you experience rain in this place, the principle of first fruit. It is a divine principle. It is my duty uh, 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 as a bishop or as a pastor to teach you what you need to do to walk into this blessing. Dig that. The oil never ceased. The flower never ran out until there was rain in the city. Amen. Then you come to my text, and I'll be snapping. At 2 Kings chapter 4, it, 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 it is a drama between two women who had two needs, and they were all tapping into the grace of God or the anointing upon the life of Elisha. Amen. And those days, God anoints a prophet to be his channel or vehicle of releasing his blessings and grace upon his people. One came to Elisha with a cry. Listen, my husband is dead. My husband was a good man. My husband served the Lord. My husband was a man of integrity. But my husband died broke. And they are coming to take my two sons to go and serve as slaves. The creditors are coming for them to pay for their indebtedness. And she ran to the man of God seeking for help, recognizing 
that any time you run into challenges, your first source of records must be God. And the man of God made a simple statement. What do you have in your hands? I have nothing but this small oil. He said, follow prophetic instructions. Follow what the word of the Lord says. And I'm telling you what the word of the Lord says concerning solution to those problems that you are going through based on scripture. Shut yourself up. Go and borrow a lot of barrels and pour the oil into them. The Bible said that as long as that woman obeyed the voice of this great prophet, every barrel was filled with oil until there was no barrel available. They sold it, paid her indebtedness, and had extra money to take care of her sons and her family. God is so much interested in what you are going through. And he's more than willing to help you out of that mess. But are you ready to obey divine principle that will open the manifestation of his blessings into your life? One was a poor widow. The second one wasn't a widow. The Shunammite woman. She wasn't a widow and she wasn't poor. That is the contrast. She wasn't a widow and she wasn't poor. In fact, the Bible describes her as a rich woman. A rich, worthy woman. Rich and worthy but she had a need in her life. Her need was totally different from the one of that poor widow. Her need was that I have every money, but I don't have a child who will inherit my wealth. Like someone says, let me quote, each and every one of us here, we need a miracle. It doesn't matter who you are, you need a miracle in your life. You need God's divine intervention in your life in one way or the other. You need a miracle in your life. In one way or the other, you need the help of God in your life. In one way or the other, you need divine intervention in your life. Your need might be different from mine, and mine might be different from yours, but we all need divine interventions in our lives. Hallelujah. But guess what that widow also did? Uh, what that rich Shunammite woman also did. When she saw the anointing, she said to her husband, I can perceive that this man is a godly man. Let us make some space in our house for him. Let us make some room in our house for him. That any time she walks by, he can have a place to lay his head. She recognized the grace, she recognized the anointing, and she gave the anointing the right way. Honored the anointing, simply put. Honored that grace, simply put. Recognize him that something can flow from that anointing to meet a certain need in my life. A need that might be so personal that nobody will know about. Oh, praise God. Recognize that anointing. I need that anointing. And the man of God said that, good man, you have been good to me. Is there anything in your life that I can do for you. Do you want me to contact the captains or the kings or the big men out there? Establish some business links for you. Gehazi said, Sir, let me paraphrase. This woman doesn't need all those things. So she has the money. She's rich. She's worthy. She doesn't need all those things. The need in her life 
is not money, but the need in her life is a child. Identify the need. It's a, it's a child. She doesn't need money. She needs a child. That's what she needs. And guess what happened? The prophet said to the woman, come here. Next year by this time, you have a son. Say, man of God, don't lie to me. Man of God, please don't lie to me. Man of God, don't do that, don't do that. If you are sleeping in my house and you are eating and you are praying and there's peace in my house, that is okay. Leave me alone. Man of God, I, I am an old woman. Don't do that. But that is one thing about God. He steps in when you get to the end of the road and there's nothing you can do by yourself. So that when he does it, you will know that you know that this is the doing of the Lord. Period. He said, it shall be done. He said, it, it, it shall be done. That, that miracle will take place. I will do it in your life. It shall be done. Hallelujah. To cut a long story short, that miracle did happen. The Shunammite woman received that need in her life. She had a baby. And let me tell you something. Anything that is born of God and by God, God will sustain it and God will watch over it until the purpose for which he gave it to you is fully fulfilled. The baby died, God brought that baby back to life. What am I trying to teach this morning? The principle of recognizing the place of God in everything that you do, and not only recognizing God, but giving God the first place in your life. The widow ran to God, I need your help. You are the first place. Shunammite woman, God. You are the, and both of them receive tremendous miracles in their lives. When we talk about first fruit, brothers and sisters, saints of God, we are, we are, we are, we are looking beyond just the money that we bring. The deeper principle behind it is recognizing God as the first place in your life and the source of everything that you have pointing out to God, recognizing him. That's the essence of first fruit. I bring my first fruit because I want to say to God, this year I'm recognizing you that whatever I will have, wherever I will go, and whatever I will do, will be as a result of your grace and of your mercy. So God, I want to bring this as an act of sacrifice, as an act of obedience to you, to say that God received the spirit of sacrifice and toil behind this giving. And Yehovah, bless the rest of my days, bless the rest of my hours, and bless the rest of the year let it be a fruitful year for me. And you'll be surprised at what God will do in your life. It is an investment that you can fall on. An investment that you can fall on. It is a point of contact you can use in times of need. Hallelujah. If you don't believe in God, ask Hezekiah. I believe in Isaiah chapter 38. When the prophet came and said, Hey, Hezekiah, you, you are set your house in order. You are going to die. Hezekiah said, God, God, I, I heard the prophet, Isaiah, I've heard it. He turned his face to the Lord and he said, God, 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 please. God, remember, God. I, I have walked in the integrity of my God, God, I have done this and done this and that. God, God, I have done that. And whilst he was arguing his way, the same prophet who said that she was going to die, the same prophet said that, that says the Lord, 
is a care, you won't die. I've added 15 more years to your life. He said, go and take his care. That says the Lord. The God of David, your father, I have heard your prayers and I have seen your tears. Surely I will add to your days 15 years. Give me the earlier verses. I want to give me the earlier verses. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus saith the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. I'm not a lawyer, but when the lawyer uses the word shall, definite, Allah, you shall die. You will not live. You shall die. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed to the and prayed to the Lord and said, "Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth." with a loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight and Hezekiah wept bitterly and the, and the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying go and tell Hezekiah the prophet said you are done you you shall die he said God, God hold on before you kill me let me argue my case God you, you know how I have served you in truth, you know I have obeyed your word. God, you know what I've served you, uh, what I've done in loyalty. God, you know what I've done. Please, God. He worked bitterly. And by the time his prayers could end, the Lord said to Isaiah, go back and tell his care. He will not die. He will live 15 more years. Was the first prophecy true? True. But there are certain divine acts that can engage God and engage the mercy of God to turn things around in your favor. He's a care banked on things he has done. I've saved you in truth, in loyalty. You remember now, Lord, I pray you, I've walked before you in truth. And with, and with a loyal heart, and have done what is good in your sight, arguing his case. So some of these principles, they can become a point of contact for divine interventions when the battle is so intense and you do not know what to do. God changed his mind. He said, go and tell the care. He won't die. I said it. But this one, mercy is ruling over justice. Mercy is ruling over justice. I said, the prophet said it. And the same, I said, go and tell him, he won't die. He was sick near to death. God said, he won't die. He will live another 15 years. Grace to the third level. 15 years, he won't die. And the man lived for 15 more years. I'm saying that when you learn to obey some of the divine principles, they become your basis for argument before God in times of need. Have you got God said, come and let us raise him together. Present your case. I say, God, you know it, you know it. God, this year, things cannot go that way. I beg you, God. Listen, God, in, in, in the midst of my need, Lord, I brought, I brought my first rule. You know it. Lord, please, this one there, this contract there, this breakthrough there, this healing there, this deliverance here. God, please, do something about it. I am standing on the grounds, Lord, of that act of obedience. Please honor your word. And our God is a just God. He will show you mercy. Hezekiah did it. Putting God first 
in everything that you do. I want to challenge your thinking tonight, today, this morning. I, I told a friend, and he said, Papa, since you said that thing, I've been doing it, it works. I said, if in your company, if it's your own private company, he said, Papa, I do it. At the end of every year, I take a seed, not out of my, it's my own business, from my business, and he said, God, I put this before you at the altar. This is my first fruit on behalf of this business. Flourish it, God, I pray. Do something with this business. Listen, the truth is that the people you work with in the marketplace are consulting a whole lot of things. So they are consulting. So you cannot sit down without deploring the grace that comes from God to fight in that space. And if you want to win, apply divine principles, God will give you the upper hand. Amen. Amen. But the first fruit, the best of all first fruits that you can give to God is the first fruit of your life. The first fruit of your life, that's why being born again is so important. It holds the key to everything that you want from God. Coming and saying to God, I present my life to you as a living sacrifice. Lord, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days and let them flow in ceaseless praise. Lord, I give my life to you. Put it on the altar and say, Jesus, take over my life. Be the Lord and the Savior of my life. When you do that, God takes over your life and will lead you every step of the way. Listen, you might be in this church for years, but you have never done that. You have never done that. You have never done that. You might be here for years, but you have never come to that place where we say, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord and the Savior of my life. Please come into my life. Lord, take control over my life. Maybe you've never done it before in your life. I want to give you the opportunity to do it this morning. And say, dear Lord Jesus, please take control over my life. I give it to you. It's a year of change. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. Somebody said, for the fact that you sleep in a garage, does not make you a car. You have to decide that Jesus come into my life and take control over my life. Master, be Lord over my life. Take control over this life. It's more than willing to take control over your life. Maybe you're already born again, but you have not fully surrendered your life to God and ask Him that be Lord over every area of my life. This is an opportunity for you to do that as you prepare yourself to say, God, I bring you the first fruit of all my increase. I want to do it this year. I want to do it. I told you, it depends upon you based on your level of faith on what you want to do. That it should be fed fruit based on your level of faith. I can say my first monthly salary, Lord, I give it to you as my fed fruit. Somebody can say my first day or my first week or whatever. That depends on you. It depends on you. I, I wouldn't mention it depends upon you, but it should be an act of faith that to say to God, I want you to take control of everything in my life this year. And I can promise you in the name of Jesus, when you do that, God will honor his word. God will do you good. Amen. I invite Pastor Paul to come and lead you. Accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. And I'll come back if you brought your first fruit today. I will receive it. But prepare yourself, especially for a Holy Ghost first fruit service next Sunday. Prepare yourself. I'm going to prepare myself. I'm going to get ready. And I know God will bless us. It is our year of change. I said it is our year of what? Change. And something must change in your life.
May God grant you grace in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, are you clapping? Let's clap better. You are here. You want to give your life to Christ Jesus. Lift up your hand. Otherwise, we'll stand together and pray. Today is the last day of our fasting and prayer. We have to do a little prayer before we close. Let's stand together. For those of you who can stand, let's stand. Let's stand. Let's do a little prayer. Let's do a little prayer. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to, to you. you. Take, Take my moments and my day. day. Let them flow with the ceaseless prayer. Second start. Take my hands and let them down. And the impulse of thy love. Ah. voice and let me sing my voice always only for my king always only for my king take my lips take my lips and feel messages Son, we are making it prayer to God this morning. Take my hands, take my life, take my intellect, take my silver, take my gold. Oh yes, in the name of the Lord Jesus, today we sanctify and dedicate to you everything that represents us, everything that makes us. Today we offer our lives as living sacrifices unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus, a trousy, a say so prosty manco bow, lutra, a taste, a pity, a trando, becket all of us suffer thousand years, root a prosty man close to shoe, a rovi gitana, a trans, a base, a wot, a clist, a searching cabiomo, a rude victory to soul, a pound, a licklist, the says, a bit to a says, a trust of not a cow, you are not by another. Obey for foul to squash the mound, you root train to blow the such in this now. Leak like a taste of me of it war. I draw to mount to squash the mamba. I call on a trotros in my hand. I want to break and make a tone aside. Metro skate to sassu watch in the air. The air the trace to sassu watch you go on you. I try to mount to blast the shoes out. Click a taste of me about you. Root of blows to mount to was she cut was in here. We break and make him about to fouls in here. Le trace the soul to wash it out. Le break a paraman out. We break a banana out. We break a banana out. I trot the soul to wall. 
our trust our stays a big mile, a fit house a man to stays a dead, a chat house a man a man a brab out, leak lace they say is a big a, a road to cross the mouth to swore, a road to proud to sound to swore, a road to make him a proud you, leak lace they say is a hot to cause in you, root to blows the mouth to suss what you need, lead the break and make him a man, lead the out to trust our sounds of us, root to wash, get to wash it to it, Lee break and make him a mouth, re break and make him a mouth, Lee break the sounds of us, Lee sort of was a break and to us in the end, I trust the boat to us about the end. Tell him a trust no sword, the glaze the saints of the earth, root to blows the sword, to count the swords in her. A taste of breath, a tone she can't, mantle pet was he be a detroit she glaze the seat to what she has an hour. Dear glaze the saints of the Take my life, let it be, let it be consecrated unto you. Lord, take our moments and our days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let's look at the second stanza. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of the Lord. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may God take your hands. May he bless our hands. May he lead our feet. May he establish our feet upon high places. May he cause our feet to walk on paths of righteousness. Lift up your voice. Let's do some prayer. Father, we sanctify our hands unto you. Bless the work of our hands in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless the work, bless the work of our hands this year. Oh, lift up your hands. Let's lift up your hands to God or clap your hands unto God. Let's do some prayer. Let the God, the God who serve, bless the work of your hands. May he make a way when there seems to be no way. Oh, Lord, bless the work of the hands of your people this year. Bless them with our boundaries. 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 Lord, establish our feet on paths of righteousness for your name's sake. A trash go stays up here, my trust in you. Oh, the calu was here today. Run to praise the mountain. A trust this swore she can have it round here. Run you about the sun in the Kamayama. Run to blast the south in here. Rain me out to us in here. Run to blast the man cut to us. Liga to us she to it. I was. the work of our hands. May God establish our feet on paths of righteousness. A friend was uh, saying that Pastor Paul, here, 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 here. Blast us. God's, God has cursed the works of their legs. It shall not be your story. I say it shall not be your story. May God establish your feet on paths of righteousness. Whatever you touch, may God bless. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Give me the next one, yes. Take my voice, let me sing. Always only for my king, my lips filled with messages from God. This year you will speak the gospel. You will share the gospel. God will fill your mouth with testimonies. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice. Let's do some prayer. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, this year, take our voices, take our lips, oh God. Fill our hearts with grace, with grace. May we speak the word of faith. May we speak the word of salvation. May our long, our mouths sing of your messes. May our tongues sing of your goodness. Fill our hearts with your testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Adroshke tuosi browsi bie. Adakrasto 
Manto Siswo, Atrosi Azidi, Award Recanto Blanc to Branto Betwo, I be praying to close to Suo Sidi, as so she has it here, and a drop that out is in here, I'm a drop a can one a day, a real robust to Sasuo, as so she must go the cave, a from the tall of a Sasuo, Atrosi Hesie, a lick less the says the word, may our mouth be filled. With your testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus. At all CPA, the eclipse, the saints of your marana, a rat of lost about the swamp, a so big to what she can be you, a rotten brand to pet wood, a reblost the says what, the eclipse, the saints of the earth, a reprop out the calamano, hey, a to what she can to a sabbatier, a four papras to swas in the air, a rot of brand to pet wood, a clown. I beg it to us, a sword, a city, be CBA. The name of Jesus. And, and, they, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. May God fill you with testimonies. I say, may the Lord fill you with testimonies so that you can combine your testimonies with the blood of the Lamb. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimonies. May God fill your mouth with testimonies. May God fill our hearts and our lives with testimonies. May God fill this church with testimonies. May the families in this church with testimonies. So shall it be. Let's take the last son is up. Take my silver and my gold, not a mind will I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Let it be your confession. Take it in prayer. Take it in prayer. Let the Lord tell the Lord that your silver and your gold is they are available this year to promote the word of the kingdom. Yes, that as it increases you in partnership, yes, you shall be faithful in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I remember about the first the battle so I saw skate the sasu wa jinie licrest the make mo to town here I remember first the sasu wa jinie I want ya man to clash the skate lidio te so ti mo sinie ruta bros the man to sasu wa jikenio licrest the skate the sasu wa I want the frappa to te to a socio sinio te a rain we come from on you Drowsing in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Tell you, say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your faithfulness to me and my household, to this church and to this nation. This year shall be different. Many more new things in the name of the Lord Jesus. By the time we meet next week to be to be February, and I want us to pray into the month. The Bible says in Revelation 22 that there is a fruit of the tree of life that God gives us every month. May you receive that fruit of February also. And it says that the, the leaves are for the healing of the nations. May you stay healthy. May you stay strong. May the Lord restore health to you. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the month of February. Thank you for how far you have brought me in January. As I enter February, I possess February. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare it blessed. I declare it, I declare it blessed. In the name of Jesus, let the patterns of glory, let the patterns of honor, let the patterns of God's faithfulness find expression in the month of February. Let every outstanding blessing that is still outstanding in January find expression in a few days ahead 
before the month ends. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Clap your hands. Let's do some prayer. My brother skate to Sasuo. A rutala my soul said to us. She has in yet. Reclaim can make him a proud you. A soul suppress the mantos yet. We are frost to scout to smoke. Remana break to clone your net. Walls are brass to shades of what? Walls are break or toes of you. Leon the trains of your city. Get to a satuo situation yet. Rain to brass to sounds in yet. I can't come up about the sausage yet. Lead break to sit more. Rob a brown butter clays the Caesar. Rub up the clouds to mantuos in yet. Rato mantu brass to bow to sasuo. Road the clays the Caesar. Read of rose the matuo. Atatas a mantal in yet. Lanuo tays a brass to matuo. Still outstanding in January. Let it find expression. In my brain, Capitolia, Sasuo, Chisa, the Rebra, he told a man in the Sasuo, Chidia, Sasuo. And we pray. We pray that every blessing that is still outstanding in January, it shall find expression. In the next few days before we end the month, let it be to those who believe it. I said, any blessing that God intended for January that is still outstanding, let it find expression in the next few days before we end the month. And we pray into favor, we're saying that any evil pattern that was previously associated with your favor, with my favor, we forbid their expression this year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may time favor you. May the days favor you. And this year is a leap year. So February has 29, year, uh, 29 days. May God grant you an addition. I say may God grant you a pleasant addition. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's give the Lord a clap. Oh, clap, clap unto the Lord. He has done great things. 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 Bless them in the name of the Lord. Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. You have your tithe, let's come and offer our tithe to God. You have your tithe, come, let's offer the tithe to God. Oh, hallelujah. You have your tithe, come, let's offer our tithe to God. As you prepare an offering, let your offering be an Abel offering. The Abel offering, when you sit in church and it's time for offering, there is an offering that says that I will not go. There is an offering that says that I will not go. That is the Abel offering. So if you have a hundred Ghana cities and a fifty Ghana cities, and then there is an impression from the Spirit on you that give the hundred Ghana city, and it says I will not go, that is the Abel offering. The Bible says that Abel's offering was more acceptable to God, and God did not have respect to Cain's offering. Oh, you have your tithes. Lift up your tithe and say, Heavenly Father. Oh, I can hear you. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for this working partnership. Thank you for your faithfulness to me. Of all that you have blessed me with, this is your portion. And in faith and obedience, I offer it to you. And this is my testimony that because you are the true recipient, you ever leave. Because you leave, I can face tomorrow. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Give me your tithe. The Lord bless and increase you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord come true for you and your family. The Lord be your stay and your standby. The Lord cause you to laugh. 
so that we can love with you. Father, behold a spirit of sacrifice and obedience behind these tithes. You, the true recipient of all this, honor your word in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. God bless you, Gideon. Let's stand together. Let's bring an offering to God. Say, this is my seed. Oh, let's stand together. Say, this is my seed. As I offer it, Lord, bless and increase me in Jesus' name. The short code is on it. You can pay your tithe. You can pay your offering with a short code. God bless you. Oh, put your hands together for Jesus. And come to the Lord with dancing and with singing. Hallelujah. Amen. Darling Jesus, darling Jesus, oh my darling Jesus, you are wonderful, Lord. I love you so, oh my darling Jesus, oh my darling Jesus, you are. Say, darling. Darling Jesus, darling Jesus, oh my darling Jesus, you are wonderful, Lord. I love you so, so. Always by my side, you never leave me, you never forsake me. Thank you, Jesus. So, oh, thank you, my Lord, darling, darling Jesus, yeah, darling, darling Jesus. Jesus. Oh, my darling Jesus, you are wonderful. Yeah, I love you so, oh, my darling Jesus. Oh, my darling Jesus, you are wonderful. Oh, darling Jesus, you are wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. 